when we got to that firehouse for that event, the mood was tense. There were Trump supporters outside. We were clutching our cameras like, all right, this is this could be interesting. Don't be so afraid to fail, Democrats. Welcome to a special bonus episode of Campaign Experts React. My name is Elijah. I'm the producer of this series. This week, we're going to give it over to three young ad makers that we wanted to have on. I'll let them take it from here. And just as a little note, we ended up doing four ads this week. Welcome to the radical left takeover of Campaign Experts React. I'm Alex O'Keefe, the creative director of the Sunrise Movement. Hey, I'm Kohad Minasian. I'm currently a video producer with AOC's campaign, and I'm also the co-founder of And Roses. Hey, I'm Tassine. I was a former Bernie 2020 video producer, and now I'm also a co-founder of And Roses. The first ad we're going to talk about is an ad directed towards young people from the Biden campaign. <clears throat> they go right foot, then left, and what they ain't gonna do is finesse. They don't work too hard, too long. It's about time to come and right these wrongs. They about justice and peace. We can do this. And if you wanna see some change, say the action starts with me. Biden, let's vote, vote, vote. Harris, let's vote, vote, vote. Biden, let's vote, vote, vote. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. What do you think, Alex? <laughs> you, know, <I'm> first. <laughs> you sure you want me to go first? Y'all, I mean, well, we can all agree the editing's very cool. I can't do those yeah. graphics. Yeah, right? I mean, I can appreciate definitely the editing work that went into this and the graphics work, but I mean, it, it does feel to me like when you're at the movie theaters and they're like trying to get you to buy a Coca Cola, you know? <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's like sticky, st sticky sweet. Like, don't eat it. <laughs> I do like it that it's a little bit happier because, yeah. you know, I think that right in this moment, we need some kind of hope. And like a happier tone just does like energize young people. I like happy videos. So I did, I did like that. <laughs> a lot of people smiling. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> I just think that there has to be a little bit more substance and we have to be the protagonists, um, not Biden, you know? The reason why we're harping is because in 2016, nine in 10 young people said they intended to vote, but less than half of them actually did. So it stands to reason that all this political content late in the game, pressuring young people to vote actually alienates them, actually makes them less likely to vote. And that's because political ads targeted at us, young people, um, they're either like old people and celebrities shaming us about our civic duty to vote, or it's like this, that it's like high octane, like a baby bottle pop commercial. Like we're just like babies who like the bright colors and animation. I'm trying to be pragmatic and I'll work with anybody who at least will show up for me next year. We are super involved. We're in the streets and we want to hear about our part to play after the election. Build that vision, Biden team, build that vision. We know, young people know Biden is not our savior. But LBJ did not pass the civil rights bill because he was less racist than the last president. And FDR not passed the New Deal because he was more socialist than the president before him. Our most successful presidents were moved by movements, millions of people. The next ad we're going to talk about is a primary ad from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Right now, New York is experiencing three concurrent crises. Crisis of health with COVID-19, the economic crisis of mass unemployment, and the crisis of racism in our systems of law enforcement. These are systemic problems, and I'm proud to have them fighting for systemic solutions. But listen, if we want change, we also got to vote for it. And that's why I'm asking for your vote on June 23rd. I'm Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and I approve this message. We were just talking about this the other day, right? It's like she, she's in motion. You don't see that too often in political ads, but it's not just her. If you look at the ad, like everyone is in motion, like really just literally saying, this is the movement, right? Like we are not stationary. We're not like sitting around waiting for change. In every image you go to, like there is movement in a direction, right? Whether it's like paying attention to the screen, like we are tuned into what is happening around the country, whether it's, you know, in the streets, whether it's, helping our neighbors. It's looking up to see what our neighbors are doing and making sure they're okay. 
Um, there's just so much transaction in it. But I think in terms of messaging, like what she is so brilliant at is obviously saying, here's what's been wrong. Here's what I've been doing about it. But, you know, here's what you can do about it without any ounce of shame, right? Like there's no shame that you can put on someone to get them to act. Yeah, it's just part of the process rather than this like holy thing that you get to participate in. I feel like this video is more more so like digital first almost, even though it's, you know, very much beautiful and very film cinematic. Um, there's no text and that's super interesting because if you notice most most campaign ads have a lot of text because analytics say that people who um, are watching the television, they're usually not paying attention. So if they're not paying attention, big, bright, very funky, loud, text is important. So I think it's really fascinating that she actually just takes all these like preconceived notions and all these analytics and it's like, I'm not going to listen. I'm going to do what I want. And it works. But I love that motif that you were saying, Kohar, of like people watching the news in bodegas and places of work. In political ads, we usually just show those news clips in a flat digital way. Um, and we don't show how we congregate and we make these decisions and we create our political opinions in groups together as we're watching things, mm -hmm. as we're watching debates or we're seeing the government abandon us during a crisis. So I thought that was really, really beautiful. And then also when they, in the longer version of this ad, the A Better World is Possible version, um, they show the protests by using like a uh, vintage film. And mm -hmm. it really helps, I like to play with this too, helps a vision of the future, a lot of times you actually want to call back to the past, nostalgia. Most successful political campaigns do that. Obama did that. Um, it was written by, you know, slaves and abolitionists and the freedom riders. And Trump did that. Make America great again. It's really important to, uh, like, give that precedent. And the number one thing that I believe political ads should do is imbue some militant optimism. Make the defeated person try the world again. If you make a three-minute ad, and it's not doing that, it's not a successful ad. You have to prove cynicism wrong. The next ad we're gonna talk about is an ad that Kohar worked on for Elizabeth Warren's primary campaign. I like to be an imperfect. Uh, a lot of people tell me, you know, you're in the reddest of the red here. I like being here. from Baltimore, Maryland tonight have just introduced a bill to put in a hundred billion dollars over the next 10 years to meet this crisis head on and to wipe it out. That's our job. So we have a very small town here under 500 population, but uh, recently we've been in the news for the large number of prescription pills that's been given out in our community. When this comes from big, uh, big drug industries, she wants to hold them accountable for the problems that they've caused in our local community. The whole point of this is to push this money down into the communities that are on the front lines dealing with this problem. It would be about $50 million a year right here in West Virginia. Come straight to towns like Kermit. I mean, we live in a place where people are using their bodies to power the nation. In West Virginia, we have miners who have worked to build this country and a lot of them, you know, get hurt. They absolutely think there's a connection between what, what's gone on here being, you know, kind of beholden to extractive industry for so long and uh, where we are now economically as it relates to opioids, all of it. Anyone in here know someone who's been caught in the grips of addiction? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I love someone for whom this has happened. You know, that's why, that's why I'm here today. We've never had nobody say what she just said in there tonight. It's time for a change. I'm from the Kermit area, and I do support Warren for president. I think that trip to West Virginia is one of my favorite places that I got to see on the trail last year. When we got to that firehouse for that event, the mood was tense. There were Trump supporters outside. We were, you know, clutching our cameras, like, all right, this is this could be interesting. Um, but by the time she had finished speaking, it's like, 
oh, like the whole town's here. Everybody's listening. Everyone understands what she's saying. This, they've lived this. They inherently understand this. I think content like this is really, really important for campaigns. I think that it humanizes the candidate. I think that it shows like another side rather than like, you know, the traditional kind of ad. I feel like it pops up organically on your feed and you feel like you're connected to this candidate in a, in a different way, you know, rather than it being like this, like, you know, exactly what Alex was saying, like, go vote, blah, 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 da, 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 da. you know, like, it's not aggressive. It's super subtle. And I think that that's the way to get to young people. Like, it needs to be, we need like this constant, um, we need to be like fed this constant information and we need to be kind of um, educated and, and told um, what these candidates are about without it being like big, funky, bright letters all the time. I love West Virginia so much. Uh, well, my mom's from West Virginia. West Virginia used to vote exclusively Democrat for the president, the state legislature, their, for Congress, for the Senate, their mayors. It was all Democrats and it was all union. This is a state that voted overwhelmingly for Bernie, Bernie Sanders. And it's true. If you talk to these people, they liked Bernie Sanders and they liked Donald Trump because they just wanted a Molotov cocktail to throw at the system that had taken away all their loved ones and taken away their towns. And these are not histories that we tell. Well, I guess it's that time of the episode. Listen, I've asked Dan to do this hundreds of times at this point. And I have meetings, literal meetings, where people ask me about the subscriber count of our YouTube channel. So I don't want to be dramatic, but I guess you could say that my livelihood is directly tied to you subscribing to the Crooked Media YouTube channel. So please, I'm not ashamed to say it, smash that subscribe button. The next ad we're gonna talk about went viral on social media recently, and I have to warn you, is a little not safe for work. So, you're really not gonna vote? You know it's more than just the president on the ballot, right? Check it. A district attorney decides who to prosecute. Including whether or not to go after dirty cops. Do you know who elects the DA? We do. But you don't want to vote. Can't make it rain if you locked up on some bullshit. Want trades and coding taught in our schools? Then vote for the school boards that will prepare us for the job market. Want to end cash bail? Well, then vote for the sheriffs and county officials that feel the same way you do. But you talking about, oh, they gonna pick who they gonna pitch, shouty. Ferguson just elected their first black mayor. You know how that happened? It's clear black lives don't matter to some of our current elected officials. If they matter to you, then don't let other people decide who's gonna run your community. Get your booty to the poll. Get your booty to the poll. Get your booty to the poll. Get, get, get your vote. For information on how and where to vote, as well as resources to find out who's running where you live, go to GetYourBootyToThePoll.com. I love this, sorry. <laughs> they just didn't focus on the presidential election. They focused on voting in your local elections and voting for, you know, different types of things. And then on top of that, like, People are apathetic. People are, you know, feeling defeated. And, you know, they went out and they were like, just go get your booty to the poll. Yeah. <laughs> I Love think it's it. brilliant. When I first saw it, I was like, okay, who did this? It's always my first reaction kind of. <laughs> uh, and I was pretty excited to see it was directed by a woman. That's good. And then, um, you know, it does feel like the strippers have agency, right? Like they brought themselves to this, like their personalities are here. I was really worried when I heard the title of this that the strippers and the sex workers would be the butt of the joke, no pun intended. Um, but I really appreciate that sex workers are being given a voice here. What they were asking for is not vote for Biden, he's gonna save us all from fascism. Um, it's not vote or else, it's vote and then what's next. It has a theory of change. It's not just this extractive vote vote for me it's saying vote and we're going to do this and accomplish this and we're going to keep moving vote for progressive uh prosecutors who can change the ways the laws are made and it is interesting to learn that it's directed by a woman i think that's no coincidence and that's why we always have to bring more women uh more black and brown people more people who are not usually in this process into the process to make political ads a little less cringe than they need to be <laughs> totally like the vote, vote, vote felt right here. You know what I'm saying? The big text, yeah. It's yeah like it didn't feel weird. 
that yeah. Is yeah, I think that we need to empower creatives and creatives of color, women of color, to be the ones creating all these campaign ads, you know? We're going to be the ones that bring a different perspective. We're going to be the ones that, you know, young people listen to. So it can't just be this cookie cutter, methodical um, system anymore. Yeah, if, if we want to make more entertaining, more uh, resonant ads, have working class people, women, people of color, who are not given so much algorithmic control, let them just be free and let it happen. Don't be so afraid to fail, Democrats. Thanks so much for watching these ads and videos with us. If there's any ad or piece of political media that you want us to break down next time, please let us know in the comments.